Today's Anthro Girl profile, thrice dipped in vanilla and cherry sauce, comes from the streets of Elwood. Everyone's favorite red-headed tomboy, Molly McDonald. Making her first appearance in the 1996 episode, DW Up Wet, as a background character. You can see her laughing at Arthur and Buster, because they have to put up with DW's childish antics. From this early design, she looked much older, and also hung out with a more mature group to boot. I see they also left in the One Piece as a staple design of her character. The team must have thought this character had potential, and with reasons we're all too familiar with. Considering that she's a studio created character, that didn't make her first appearance in the books until 2002's Arthur It's Only Rock and Roll. She received quite a promotion from a one off background character to a minor character with reoccurring episodes focusing on her. On the topic of Molly's build and appearance, she's a slender white cream colored rabbit with rounded ears and a triangle buttoned nose. Her most distinctive feature is her short red hair with bangs that cover her eyes. Her eyes are usually kept hidden, but certain episodes like to take liberties, for whatever reason. Molly's usual attire consists of a blue sleeveless and ripped denim vest, a darker pair of blue jeans that are ripped near the knees, a tan belt, and red sneakers with white accents. Also, she wears a watch, but that's sometimes hard to spot. Skateboarding is one of her favorite hobbies. Here she dons a helmet and pads for safety. One of her most iconic outfits is definitely her blue and teal one-piece swimsuit. Seen in the episode Arthur Makes Waves, where the tight fit of the swimsuit brought all of Molly's feminine features on full display. No longer hidden away under loose and tomboyish clothing, this episode proved to us that indeed the ass was fat. Other outfits include the use of various shirts, sleepwear, sportswear, dun -dun, jackets, and costumes used in plays or imaginary sequences. Overall, you'll mostly see her wearing loose clothes, unless the occasion says otherwise. Next, I need to discuss the book, Arthur, It's Only Rock and Roll. I really tend to underestimate how popular boy bands were at the time. I mean, they were huge back then, and very profitable. They actually made this a point of discussion in their respective book and cartoon specials. But it's fine to pursue one's fame or fortune, as long as the soul of their work stays intact. I.e., don't forget that in the end, it's all about the music. If we were to compare how Molly looks in the book versus the show, Molly looks much more petite in the book, which seems to fit her age better. In the show, Molly ends up looking more like a teenager, and the same goes for the rest of the tough customers. Honestly, I like both designs. I can respect the different interpretations by Mark Brown and the studio, as they both look visually appealing and work within the respective mediums. Molly is born from Scottish heritage, as revealed in The Last King of Lamland. She has a little brother named James, which she loves with all her heart, often putting up with annoyances to help him and his friends or changing her own behavior to become a better role model. James serves as one of the only other outlets where we can see Molly's emotional side. Interesting enough, Molly practices her drawing skills on the side, something that has never been hinted before in the series. I have many gripes with the episode The Agent of Change, but I'll summarize what we learn. Molly has amassed a good deal of knowledge about the process and techniques for animation, has created her own original character at an early age, and has all the equipment necessary to make a short in her room. You know, I should save my breath to cover this episode in another video. At long last, she succeeds in finishing the short with Muffy and Francine. Her love for drawing slash animation is then never brought up again. As for the musical arts, Molly's a big fan of the band Muda Krug. This is usually what she listens to or other bands of the heavy metal genre. This has led to her being coined the Thrasher Bunny from Arthur when people talk about Molly but forget her name. She is also seen playing guitar but only special episodes or just one episode if I remember correctly. Molly attends Lakewood Elementary School, and frequently hangs out with her best friends Binky, Rattles, and Slink, where Slink was added a bit later in the series. Altogether, the most infamous group of bullies in the whole school, the tough customers. Molly will always end up joining in and picking on others or doing it herself. She comes off as brutal and mean to most kids, as this is her main strategy of ensuring the existence of her reputation. The tough customer's main base of operations resides on the top of the jungle gym at the school playground, nicknamed the Tower of Pain. This is where the group of bad eggs hang out during recess. Molly is definitely the most determined and persistent of the group in terms of keeping the reputations as bullies. In the episode Law of the Jungle Gym, when Muffy refused to step down from the Tower of Pain, Molly was the lead player in trying to teach her a lesson. Even when Muffy tried to bribe the group with a hefty sum of $5, most of the group seemed satisfied with the deal, but Molly refused to budge deeming the reputation more important than money. It was only when Molly spoke up that the rest of the tough customers changed their opinion. Even though they all decided to leave the jungle gym anyway, due to legal BS and the complications of sharing. Molly came back to make a deal with Muffy and resolve this conflict once and for all. 
but through a more diplomatic approach this time. Molly can be seen being civil to other people on occasion, but only when there's nobody else around. All of the nice relationships she has developed with other kids outside of the tough customers have been kept a secret. Arthur, for example, developed a great friendship with Molly and Arthur Makes Waves, after Molly learned that playing with kids younger than her can be fun. The episode ends with everyone trying to figure out if Molly and Arthur actually became friends, and trying to stop it to prevent diffusion and tranquility. Guess they've grown to hate each other too much and can't see it any other way. Fortunately, they were able to keep it a secret from everyone, and this friendship was called back again in DW Swims with the Fishes. Here, Molly and Arthur train their siblings to become better swimmers, and it manages to develop into an unhealthy competition. But of course, they learn in the end not to take sports or games too seriously, and just have fun, further reinforcing their solidarity. Another friendship that Molly developed is with Muffy. During the events of Don't Ask Muffy, we learned that Molly's actually really good at giving advice, a skill that made her sort of famous around the skate park, helping random kids that came to her in their time of need. She admitted it was getting annoying, but never told them off. In my opinion, she liked helping people, and in the enclosed view of the skate park, news outside would spread very slowly. So it was a risk she was willing to take. She was so good at this that in effect, nobody was asking Muffy for advice through her news column. This led to Muffy finding out and impersonating Molly to try to get kids to ask her for advice. Completely failing to understand why Molly was in such high demand, she asked Molly for advice on what she should do. Putting the skill to work, she told Muffy to actually learn from people who give advice as their jobs and tells her to check out a book to help her. As a sign of their friendship, Muffy gave Molly a pin to hold up her hair in the last scene of the theater, a remembrance of their amity. We learn that Molly is not as bad as she seems to be. You just need to get to know her at the right place and time. The most intriguing part about Molly's character is the arc that she develops over the whole series. I would say that this is the best example of character development I've ever seen in any piece of children's media. To understand this, we must take a deeper look into Molly's character. Molly's problematic behavior stems from being bullied as a child, specifically about her hair. This led to her becoming a bully herself in order to develop a tough and feared reputation. A coping mechanism, no doubt, as a way to protect herself in the future. To clarify, my interpretation is that she bullies others so she doesn't get bullied herself. This is factored into the design of her character very ingeniously. She keeps her eyes hidden for good reasons. It helps establish her cold attitude and behavior. A coarse persona that helps shield her from the troubled past she experienced as a child. But in reality, she really does care about other people. Its symbolism used to its fullest. They say that the eyes are the gateway to the soul, the true makeup of a person. Molly hides her eyes, just like she hides her feelings, the more fragile and tender parts of her character, the weakness that she refuses anyone to exploit. She's not a vulnerable little girl, alone and afraid. She's a tough customer, who rules the pecking order. But over time, we begin to see more and more of her kinder side. The friendships she has developed with other kids have shown her that there is no danger in being nice, that life is easier when you can show your true self to others. Finally, the most important lesson of all, being a good example for others. This has been a lesson built up using instances of James's bad behavior before in the series. The last king of Lamland had James bully his class with the help of the Twibble twins in an effort to recreate the legend of King James of Kilflurg. Over time, James realizes that his actions have chased away his real friends and have made everyone miserable. His conscience won over and so, he looked to Molly for advice. Molly reminds James that the story is just a legend and that the king was most well known for his compassion and generosity. This is when James decided to give up his king charade and mend his friendships with his classmates. I believe that James's initial behavior was due to Molly's bad influence. Kids don't tend to overthink when copying the actions of the people they look up to. Otherwise, seeing the normally pure James suddenly acquire this train of thought seems pretty outlandish. James's bad behavior and Molly's good intentions meet up to make the episode The Last Tough Customer. This is when the tough customers decided to stop bullying because everyone has found ways of dealing with them. In a modern age of anti-bullying measures and savvier kids, this episode was an effective approach in reinventing these characters. Despite Molly's efforts in trying to keep her intimidating identity, her little brother James was the only one able to change her ways. This happened when James bullies another kid out of the drinking fountain. Molly sees the kid cry, all alone and scared, just like how she felt as a kid. This was the final wake-up call to finally give up bullying and teach James how to behave. She didn't realize it before, but bullying makes the other kids feel the same pain she did back then. And she can't even fathom James, her sweet and innocent brother, doing the same. At James's request, she apologizes to every kid she has bullied in the form of a letter. 
She even sends it to all the former Tough customers. The episode concludes with Molly, Binky, Rattles, and Slink joining up to help people make better purchasing decisions outside the chicken licking restaurant. The creation of a new group, the Tough Consumers, serves as a fresh start for all the former bullies. All in all, Molly went from a tough and selfish bully to a brilliant role model from season 1 to 16 by slowly building up Molly's character to where such a change becomes palpable. Episodes work off of each other to create an overarching narrative. There is a method to all the characters' relations and interactions. This technique was undoubtedly one of the main reasons why Molly's character arc was so satisfying. Ultimately, Molly is the most interesting character in the Arthur series. The relatively short amount of time spent on her was used beautifully to transform this character and forge a new chapter of her life, the life of her beloved tomboyish girl. Molly McDonald, code, dominating, tomboy. Queen of the jungle gym. And one tough customer. They say kids are cruel, but you never know what to expect under all that ice. It could be the nicest girl you'll ever meet. Thanks for watching.